Welcome back to the bench and today we have a little Mooga Fuga. Uh, someone had plugged the wrong power supply into it. It's expecting a 9 volt. Sends the positive input. Children were blowing up balloons and instead of tying the ends, they were letting the balloons go. So they rushed about until all the air was out of them. So instantly we're greeted with a swollen capacitor here. This is the first bypassing filter cap that the 9 volt sees. <laughs> We'll quickly test this capacitor. Open circuit. So the 9 volts comes in through this little diode. There'll be a little voltage drop. And then it goes into this little IC here, which is a TC7662. Um, it's a DC inverter, so then we should see a negative voltage rail here at this IC. So here we have 9 volts coming in. And at the moment we're pulling 149 milliamps. So we'll just check we have 9 volts coming in here. That goes through the diode. We'll have a little voltage drop. 8.3. Great. And then we're kind of expecting a minus 8. But we got 0.7. So yeah. I think that this uh, converter is faulty. We're going to uh, take replace all the caps in this area and that IC will measure the diode but I'm sure that's fine um, and at least that way it's nice and clear that I can put the IC in and stood and watched the games then he looked up at the clouds how gentle and free they look but it was time that he paid another visit to that special costume shop which his adventures could start from. There we go, like I bought one. Okay, let's turn it on. This doesn't look very good at all. We have the... Uh, LFO if I change the rate the LFO is working that makes me think we fix our negative rail issue the bypass isn't working um, let's have a look at the LFO output Excuse how that looks on the uh, screen there, it's stupid Rigol software. Okay, the LFO seems to be there. But the bypass isn't working. And we'll just check the um, voltage coming out of this DC to DC converter. So I know that this will be in Earth here and yeah 8.3 coming in minus 7.9 coming out so the switch comes in here so that looks like it's being held high I'm gonna hold down the switch so the switch is working and I can see that goes to this so that goes to this 4024 binary counter it's like a ripple counter um, so every time the button is pressed it'll advance through the pins and th there's only one pin connected so this will probably be the first digit if I can get my probe on there Okay, it's working, but it doesn't seem to come back down to zero. If I choose another output, I might have to count my way there. One, two, three, four, 
Yeah, see that one goes down to zero. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the chip seems to be working, but the output of the binary counter um, is not in being unable to get down to zero. I'm going to have to look for a schematic on this, see what's going on. Well, I did find some kind soul on freestompboxes.org to trace this circuit out. This is the 4024. The switch is here. This is the resistor holding it high. Um, we were probing the output, which is pin 12. None of the other pins are being used. And then that flip-flops to uh, change the state of the LED between these two hex inverters on this uh, 4049. Um, so the output of this ripple counter uh, obviously goes to the hex inverters but also um, comes down to this uh, 4K7 resistor which is turning on this transistor uh, creating turning on the effect on the rest of the unit um, so we need to find out why this pin is be not allowed to go down to zero volts I think the first thing we're going to do is just remove this resistor um, and that will disconnect us from the rest of the circuit I suspect that that will make this work and even make the LEDs work without actually turning the rest of the unit on because I, um, I would suspect that this is something here is blown rather than just this part of the circuit. The output from that 4024 comes through here looks like it goes to that resistor there. Let's just unplug it and the output yeah, that's going to that resistor. That's the 4K7. So what I want to do is just see if I can lift that out of the circuit. Okay, I've just pushed that out of the way. We plug the power back in. Bypass doesn't work. And let's just scope out Oh, that hasn't made any difference. So I'm guessing it's the hex inverter that's uh, stopping it from working. So let's take out the hex inverter. The uh, hex inverter is now out. Well, we've lost a couple of lights. Obviously the bypass light because hex inverter is doing that, but it's obviously doing another part of the circuit. So let's have a look at that output. Press the button. Ooh! Press it again and it goes back down to zero. So in actual fact, that hex, hex inverter is faulty. Uh, the 4024 is working correctly. I guess we should try putting that resistor back and see if it actually um, is engaging the rest of the circuit. That's the great thing about SMD resistors, it's so easy just to pop them in and out of circuit like this. Barely an inconvenience. Place your bet in the uh, comment section if you think there's going to be anything else blown in this. Let's plug her back in and 
I've got um, a little drum loop which is coming out of my sound card going into an X amp which we're going to bring into here and that will ensure that we have the correct impedance and the right volume to come into the Mooga Fuga and we're going to come out of the Mooga Fuga into my guitar amp uh, my guitar amp has a detenuator which then goes to the Focusrite mic preamp it's like a little old the original octopri um into the sound card I'm going to have to order one of those hex inverter ICs. When as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, sir, he said. How oh, nice to see you again. What would you like? What would you like? What would you like? So now let's power up. Oh, we have different colour lights. I'm really not very good at remembering where the controls are. Wow. And then we have the mute on. Mute off. Does that show up on the camera? And also you notice that the signal light isn't fully red. Obviously that chip we just replaced was also controlling that LED. And in fact, yeah, each LED has got three pins, which is how they get in both colours. Great, well it'd be nice to see if the signal comes in um, green and goes red when it clips when you do the overdrive. I guess I'm going to box it back up. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. In the corner of the shop. Beat coming from the X amp. This time I'm going to go into the instrument input bypass my guitar amp. Fiddly dee, fiddly do, fiddly doy. Hmm. Saw a green light there. Let's turn on the beat. in bypass and yeah the LED goes orange can we make it go red yeah beautiful okay
Excellent, that all works really well. And just for the record, a completely working unit is drawing about 43 milliamps. It turns out they uh, plugged the 24 volts into this. Um, that's why the protection died, obviously didn't couldn't do anything. Um, and that took out that capacitor, the DC inverter, and the hex inverter. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. <laughs>